got there. Right? <laughs> Myself. If I can ask you all to follow behind, thank you. Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
the Lord be with you. So we come together this morning to say our final goodbyes. And by their very nature, there's an occasion of sadness as we gather to say goodbye to someone we have known and loved among us. But through that sadness, the promise of Jesus Christ, who died and rose that we might rise with him, shines through. And it is in that promise that we place our hope and our trust. We begin our Mass today with our opening hymn, I Watch the Sunlight.
prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries we call to mind our sin. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my thoughts, through my thoughts, through my most grievous thoughts. Therefore, I ask the blessed Mary and the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, who art mercy for sinners and the happiness of your saints, give we pray to your servant, for whom today we perform the paternal offices of burial, a share with your chosen ones in the blessedness you give, so that on the day of resurrection, freed from the bonds of mortality, she may come before your face. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. And we listen now to our readings from the Scriptures. The first reading from the Book of Wisdom. He accepted them as a holocaust. The souls of the virtuous are in the hands of God, no torment shall ever touch them. In the eyes of the unwise, they did appear to die. Their going looked like a disaster. They're leaving us like an iliation, but they are in peace. If they experience punishment as men see it, their hope was rich with immortality. Slight was their affliction, great will their blessings be. God has put them to the test and proved them worthy to be with him. He has tested them like gold in a furnace and accepted them as a holocaust. When the time comes for his visitation, they will shine out. As sparks run through the stubble, so will they. They shall judge nations, rule over peoples, and the Lord will be their king forever. They who trust in him will understand the truth. Those who are faithful will live with him in love. For grace and mercy await those he has chosen. This is the word of the Lord. Response, though I walk in the valley of darkness, I fear no evil, for you are with me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Response, though I walk in the valley of darkness, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil for you are at my side, with your rod and your staff that give me courage. Response, though I walk in the valley of darkness, I fear no evil, for you are with me. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Response, though I walk in the valley of darkness, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come, as once. Though I walk in the valley of darkness, I fear no evil, for you are with me. The second reading is from the letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians, chapter 4. We want you to be quite certain, brothers, about those who have died, to make sure that you do not grieve about them like other people do who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and that it will be the same for those who have died in Jesus. God will bring them with him. We can tell you this from the Lord's own teaching. 
that any of us who are left alive until the Lord's coming will not have any advantage over those that have died. At the trumpet of God and the voice of the archangel, we call out to the command and the Lord himself will come down from heaven. Those of us who have died in Christ will be the first to rise and those of, us, those of us who are still alive will be taken up into the clouds. Together then, we meet the Lord in the air, so we shall say with the Lord forever. With such thoughts, these should be comfort to one another, and this is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the Gospel. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up the hill. There he sat down and was joined by his disciples, and he began to speak. This is what he taught them. How happy are the poor in spirit, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happy the gentle, they shall have the earth for their heritage. Happy those who mourn, they shall be comforted. Happy those who hunger and thirst for what is right, they shall be satisfied. Happy the merciful, they shall have mercy shown them. Happy the pure in heart, they shall see God. Happy the peacemakers, they shall be called sons of God. Happy those who are persecuted in the cause of right, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happy are you, when people abuse you and persecute you and speak all kinds of calumny against you on my account, rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. If you'd like to be seated. On these occasions, the Church calls the faithful to a ministry of consolation, consolation which is rooted in that saving mystery of Jesus Christ and of his love and providence for his people. The Church confidently proclaims that God has created each person for eternal life and that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, by his death and resurrection has broken the chains of sin and death that had bound humanity. Christ achieved his task of redeeming humanity and of giving perfect glory to God principally by the paschal mystery of his blessed passion, his resurrection from the dead and his glorious ascension. And this, the proclamation of Jesus Christ put to death for our sins and raised to life to justify us, is at the centre of the church's teaching. And it is in this that we place our hope and our trust. But of course it doesn't prevent us from feeling that sense of sadness, that sense of loss when someone we have known and loved is no longer here present with us. We keep them always alive in our minds and in our hearts. They're, they are always one with us and always part of us. And so as we come in through to Almighty God and we turn to him in prayer for our departed sister and indeed for all his people, that in his providence, in his care, and in his love, we will all find the fullness of God's kingdom. When reunited, we can again be together in that place where everything is as everything should be. We now have Alleluia, Alleluia.
For Catherine, let us pray she may be admitted to the company of the saints and reunited with her loved ones. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We gather here today to pray for the soul of Catherine. To all those that have given their love and support, may they be rewarded for their goodness. Lord, hear us. Lord, We ask you, O Heavenly Father, that Catherine bestows her qualities to us, her unfaltering faith, strength of character, intelligence, integrity, honesty, and most of all, her love and kindness. She remains in our memories and our hearts forever. Lord, hear us. We commend Catherine on the prayers and the intercession of our blessed lady. Hail Mary. Full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. And Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. As to you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have received the bread we offer fruit of the earth and work of human hand will become for us the bread of life. As to you, Lord God of all creation, that through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his own church. Be near, O Lord, we pray to your servant Catherine, on whose funeral day we offer you this sacrifice of consolation, so that, should any stain of sin have clung to her, or any human fault have affected her, it may by your loving gift be forgiven and wiped away through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your, your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For it is at your summons that we come to birth, by your will that we are governed, and at your command that we return on account of sin to that earth from which we came. And when you give the sign, we who have been redeemed by the death of your Son shall be raised up to the glory of his resurrection. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praises without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Bernard our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant Catherine, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. And at the Saviour's command, born by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, on the faith of your church. Graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you all. <laughs> Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but as you say the word, my soul shall be healed. For communion, I would ask you to come up in single file, receive, and then go round that way, and then up this way and round. So I'll go first to this side, and then I'll move across uh, to the, the other side. If anyone uh, is unable to receive, uh, but would like a blessing, if they come forward with their hand, so, so I'll know that uh, you want a blessing and not the uh, sacrament itself.
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our sister may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And now we're almost at the end of uh, the service in church. We listen to uh, a poem by Maggie and then a eulogy. We sat beside your bedside, our hearts were crushed and sore. We did our best until the end, but we could do no more. In tears we watched you sinking, we watched you fade away. And although our hearts were breaking, we knew you could not stay. You left behind some aching hearts that loved you most sincere. We never shall and never will forget the one we love so dear. Our mom, Catherine Mary Kinsella, was born in Castle Island in County Kerry in 1925. She came over to Birmingham at the age of 18, where she met and married Barney, and went on to have eight children. As we grew up, she was always the heart of our home, caring, loving and constant. She was a great support for her brothers and sisters that followed behind her along with Nanny. Mom had many beautiful qualities. She had a quiet, deep faith and often fell asleep saying the rosary. She loved and respected the work of the missionaries. She read their magazine avidly and made very generous contributions to them. We thank her for our annual holidays to Ireland, six weeks visiting Kerry and Wexford. We continued this journey throughout Kath and Barney's married life. Mom taught us many things, manners, respect, sound moral values, the importance of education and a good work ethic. We grew up with little money, but mom always ensured we were well fed and well dressed. She often knitted our jumpers in preparation for the cold winters. Mom worked at the Valor assembling gas fires for over 20 years and she loved it. There she met her friend Mary Chance and many others, including Pauline Sace. Mom always loved a game of cards. We spent many happy Saturday afternoons with Joe and Tracy playing Crash and 25 if she could get a game. She loved the bingo and a little flutter on the horses, often being top tipster while enjoying a small toddy. She was hard of hearing, but it didn't affect her betting skills and her card skills. We always looked forward to Christmas and Midnight Mass. Mom would make a cake, a Christmas pudding, and made sure we were all catered for. The turkey and the chocolates would arrive from Ireland, and a great time was had by all looking for the sixpence in the pudding. Mom has always been our support, strength and comfort when times got tough. When we lost Barney, Jenny, Michael, Katie and Jimmy, which he found very hard to bear, it was an unfaltering faith that helped her through. A few weeks before Christmas, Mom suddenly lost the right sight in her right eye. They suspected a mini stroke. She found this very difficult, as she could no longer enjoy her books, her crosswords, watching the TV, and making her comments about Boris and Donald. She had a fall on Christmas night and then suffered with a kidney infection and was relying on oxygen for her breathing. Much of her quality of life was gone and she knew it. She prayed to God to take her and said, you'd think Barney would come and get me, wouldn't you? It is an honour to stand here today before you and to share our precious memories of our mum. She will be sadly missed by all but her memory will live on forever. We loved her so much, and we will miss her more than words can say. Goodbye, Mum.
our separate ways, we take our leave of our sister now, but we'll express our affection at ease our sadness is going to now. One day we shall joyfully greet her again, in the love of Christ which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and on that final day of days his voice shall bid me rise again, an ending joy, unceasing praise. This hope I cherish in my heart. To stand on earth, my flesh restored, not a stranger but a friend, behold my Saviour and my Lord. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on that last day. We give thanks for the blessings you bestowed upon her in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ. Die with you and our sister forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now just take our sister to her place of rest.
Perfect. And we just feed these. I'll feed those through as well. So we're going to take your ropes, feed them through the handle. You go through the handle. Make sure you're even either side. When I indicate what you'll say, just lift slightly. We'll move the struts and then feed the ropes slowly through your hands. Our sister has gone to the rest in the peace of Christ. May the Lord now welcome her to the table of God's children in heaven with faith and hope in eternal life. Let us assist her with our prayers. Thank you, gents. In that sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God our sister Kathleen. We commit her body to the ground earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. The Lord bless her and keep her. The Lord make his face to shine upon her and be gracious to her. The Lord lift up his countenance upon her and give her peace. Lord Jesus Christ, by your own three days in the tomb, you hallow the graves of all who believe in you and so make the grave a sign of hope that promises resurrection even as it claims our mortal bodies. Grant that our sister may sleep in peace until you awaken her to glory, for you are the resurrection and the life. Then she will see you face to face, and in your light will see light, and know the splendour of God, for you live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. So for our sister we pray to our Lord Jesus Christ who said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me shall live even in death, and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn, dry the tears of those who weep. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend, Comfort us in our sorrows. You raise the dead to life, give to our sister eternal life. For she was washed in baptism, anointed with the Holy Spirit, give her fellowship with all your saints. <coughs> Nourished with your body and blood, grant her a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Comfort us in our sorrow, let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. We pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy.
<laughs> God of holiness and power, accept our prayers on behalf of your servant. Do not count her deeds against her, for in her heart she desired to do your will. As her faith united her to your people on earth, so may your mercy join her to the angels in heaven. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. You are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry to you in their need. Strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord. Let your perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Amen. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. May that peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. May Almighty God bless you, Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Oh, Mom.